know I serve his majesty? He is a pretty fellow. I catch him going to cut a man's throat, and he claims he serves his majesty. So how came you in a duel? Sir, you'll not hear me. Twas he that came at me without explaining his motives. Sir, how came you at my son without explaining your motives? Your son, sir, insulted me in a manner which my honor could not brook. Sir, how durst you insult him in a manner that his honor could not brook? Come, come, let's have no order before the ladies. Captain Absolute, here's Lydia been frightened to death for you. What, that I might be killed or escape? Nay, nay, no delusions to the past. <laughs> Lydia is convinced. Speak, child. With your leave, ma'am. I must put in a word here. I believe I can interpret the young lady's silence. Now, mark the what way... What did you mean, sir? Come, come, Delia, we must be serious. This is no time for a trifling. It is true, sir. And your reproof bids me offer this gentleman my hand and solicit the return of his affections. Oh, my little angel. Say you so. Oh, well, delicious. I perceive there must be some mistake here with regard to the affront which you affirm I have given you. I can only say that it could not have been intentional. And, as you must be convinced that I should not fear to support a real injury, you shall now see that I am not ashamed to atone for an inadvertency. I beg your pardon. But, as for the woman, though honoured by her approbation, I will support my claim against any man whatever. Well, Sir Jack, and I'll stand by you, my boy. Mind you! I give up all my claim. I make no pretensions to anything in the world. Why, if I can't have my wife without fighting for her, by my vow, I'll live a bachelor. Captain, give me your hand. An affront handsomely acknowledged becomes an obligation. And as for the young lady, well, if she chooses to deny her own handwriting... Oh, we will dissolve my mystery. Uh, salute you, Sir Trigger. Perhaps there's been some... Pray, old gentlewoman. <laughs> Don't interfere where you have no business. <laughs> Miss Languish, are you Medelia or not? Indeed, sir. Ah, I am not. Oh. <laughs> salute you, Sir Trigger. Ungrateful as you are, I am the soft impeachment. Pardon my blushes. I am Delia. <gasps> you, Delia. Far be easy. Why, the barbarous Ben, I don't let us all mine. Perhaps when you are more sensible to my benignity, I may be brought to encourage the address. Mrs. Malaplop, I am extremely sensible of your condescension. And whether you or Lucy hath put this trick on me, I am equally beholden to you. And to show you I'm not ungrateful, Captain Absolute, since you've taken that lady from me, I'll give you my duty and depart. <laughs> oh, well, I'm very much obliged, but ah, here's my friend. Ah, a little batter here. You'll make it, Fargin. Sprinkles, <laughs> no. <laughs> give me your hand, Sir Lucius. Forget and forgive. If you ever have the chance of pickling me again, Say, Bob Acres is a dot. I come, come, Mrs. Malakoff, but be not cast down. You are in your bloom yet. Oh, Sir Anthony, men are all but pens. <laughs> he seems dejected and unhappy, not sullen. There was some foundation, however, to the tale he told. Oh, women, how true should be our judgment when resolution is so weak. <laughs> Oh, Julia, how can I sue for what I so little deserve? I dare not presume, yet hope is the child of penitence. Oh, Falkland, you have not been more faulty in your unkind treatment of me, and I am now in want of inclination to resent it. But as my heart honestly bids me to place my weakness to the account of love, I would be ungenerous not to admit the same thing for yours. Now I shall be blessed indeed. Come, come. I, you have been worthy quarreling to, I warrant to Julia. I have never interfered before, but let me have a hand in the matter at last. All the problems that I have ever seen in my friend Fucklin come from what he calls his delicacy and warmth of attention for you. Marry him directly, and you'll find he'll mend surprisingly. Come now. I hope 
Where is no dissatisfied person but what is content? For as I've been disappointed myself today, it'd be very hard if I had not the satisfaction of seeing other people succeed better. You are right, Sir Lucius. So, Jack, I wish you joy. Mr. Falkland, the same. Come now, to show you I am nor vexed nor angry, or stables and fights. I'll order the fiddles to the new rooms in half an hour. Uh, I suppose on you four, meeting me there. Sir, I like your spirits, and at night a single lad will drink a toast to the young couples and a husband to Mrs. Malaprop. Well, <laughs> 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 Falkland, it seems we have both tasted the bitters as well as the sweets of love. The only difference being that you always prepared a better cup for yourself, whereas I... ...was always obliged to me for it. But come, no more of that. Our happiness is now as unalloyed as general. Then let us study to preserve it so, and when hope pictures us to a flattering scene of future bliss, let us deny its pencil those colours which are too bright to be lasting. <laughs> <laughs> 